Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through my trades targets for round 21, is it? Yeah, round 21. Going through who I think will be a really, really good target to get late on in the season. This is the time of the season where we can sort of go for pods and really go for targeting those matchups rather than, I guess, guys that are averaging five or so, or so more. Like um, going for a Libertore over maybe a Laird or something like that and targeting Laird later on in the season when the tide turns for his matchups. As um, I'm trying to get down to a, yeah, here we go, Rory Laird. Let me just look here quickly. Um, Rory Laird, I think, has two or an easier matchup than a really tough matchup, but then two easy matchups in round 23 and 24. So you can really target him in those last two rounds to pick up. And I think that's an area that you can target him in in but before we get into the video and it uh, go through all the other options remember to like and subscribe turn the notification bell on so you know when i upload and let's get into the video so as you can see here um a lot of these guys that have the total points obviously let's go to average last three um so there is um a couple guys having a really good uh end to the year one of those is max scorn he's been ridiculous um so i guess you could say you're going to save a little bit of money in going um, English or something, or not English, uh, um, Royal Marshall down to Max Gorn. That could be a play um, for some people, but with me, um, I do think there is a chance tonight that we get the news that Grundy is coming back into the fold, which would hamper Max Gorn a little bit, um, especially because it's against North. But um, I still think he'll go huge, and I wouldn't be surprised if Max Gorn is um, is there at averaging 130 for the rest of the year. So Marshall could be under a little bit of threat, um, but we'll have to wait and see on that front. English, everyone has basically that is competing. Houston, um, he's actually an interesting pod, I think. What is he, 6 2% owned. So this is an interesting one. 122 last three, 113 last five. Could you go for Houston? I think there is a, a way in which you could. Um, I do think he is spiked by this uh, 156. And I do think he is just going to be that 100, and 100 guy. He has gone 108, 124, 74, 156, 106, 104. Um, with the next game, his averages should uh, drop considerably. Um, well, at least his L3 should drop down to a normalized 105 or so if he goes 105, um, which would, I think, drop him right down the pecking order. So I think this is a... And also, he's got a tough matchup, so I wouldn't necessarily be going for him. You could maybe, if his form um, still is up, go for him in the last couple rounds here and choose him and then move like a Dawson into the midfield or something. But I think there is higher averaging guys in the midfield rather than Dan Houston and I'm pretty happy with my six defenders at the moment and it doesn't look like he necessarily has an easy game to finish off the season but we'll have to wait and see on that whether those uh, matchups turn um we have Rory Lair one two one a last three I just can't get to him this week uh, which kind of sucks because um, it means that I have to miss out on him next week as well um, as I fix up Darcy Cameron. But it does mean that... So I miss out on him this week, miss out on him next week, but he will be probably coming in round 23 and 24 for, I think, Brad Crouch. And then, well, depending on Brad Crouch's scores, but we'll wait and see on that one. Um, and then potentially, I hopefully can get another um, key player in there in for the last round of the year but we'll have to wait and see on that one um whether i can actually get another premium midfielder in but i think uh rory laird someone that i had to pass on this week unless i was training out um darcy cameron or windhager and i didn't necessarily want to trade out darcy cameron because he's scoring hundreds at this point and um rory laird uh i miss out on him by like 5k so i had to go with another option which we'll get to in a second um, LDU, I think, is one that um, I think a lot of people are going for because, obviously, he's had this really good run. But if you look at this run, he's had a tough game here, tough game here, tough game here. Um, the only real indication that he's able to do it is this um, Geelong game. But even Geelong are a little bit weak at the moment. So um, I, I do know that he is scoring really, really well. 
but the problem lies in the fact that he's only really done it this year against um against horrible opposition like Eagles he did it Frio at the time was shocking um Carlton was shocking at the time Brisbane he made 76 um Gold Coast were all right at the time when that happened in 66 and then um, St Kilda have always been tough and he got 69 Port and 95 in a rough in the game where he got injured I believe and then Adelaide he came back a little bit by the 67 and then he's come back pretty strong in the last couple of weeks so I'm one that I'm willing to fade against this just because I think he will struggle because he has um, he has two toughish matchups I believe and even Richmond could actually turn into a tough matchup if they're fighting for their season. But we'll have to wait and see on that one. But um, I just don't think LDU is uh, that uh, good of a pick at the moment. But I could be completely wrong with that. And it could just be biased from not having him or not, I guess, not and jumping ahead of him in terms of who I want to grab. Because I wanted to grab Libba, Libba because I believe in this run coming up here. Um, and I think he even has a good score against, have they played Geelong yet? He scored a one two one against Geelong anyway. Have they played Richmond? He scored a one fourteen against Richmond. Hawthorne and the Eagles. Um, Hawthorne he missed out on, and they have not played the Eagles yet, from what I can see. But you can just saw in that, um, that run there, what I highlighted is that if you actually take out that, um, he's got three scores, really bad. He's got three bad scores, basically. A 76, an 80, and an 84. But aside from that, he's gone 97 plus in every single game um, that he's played in, except for three. So I think that's a good base. And with Libertore, there is a big chance that he could easily go and score a 120. But honestly, with him, I'm just looking for a 110, 120. And, I mean, he could go huge and go 130, but I don't think that is the type of player that he is. But I think there is, if we look back at 2022, um, highest score of 128, 2021, highest score of 131, uh, 2020, uh, 113 in the COVID season, 2019, 2018, and 2017, 2016... He doesn't really... 2016 is the last game that he went absolutely nuts in. And if I'm looking for that 142, it was a 19 tackle effort. Um, I don't think that's... I don't know about that. I don't think they would have played Western Bulldogs in in half of the year's matchup. So that's clearly a bug on the website. Um, so I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, we'll get out of that. Um, but I do think uh, Libba is actually an alright matchup. Uh, well, I think he is a, a guy that could actually do well enough here. I'm just looking for him to have a blast off a couple of weeks here because he has three easier matchups. Um, and let's hope that happens, I guess. Uh, Kerno, I don't think is an option as I think there's too much of a chance that he just bums out and doesn't have a good game. I mean, he's had one, two... Three, four, five, six, six tons across uh, 19 games, which is a one in three chance. So that basically means that he's probably going to turn up once in the remaining four games. Um, and then you've got one, two, um, three, four, 90. So there's a um, 10 out of 19 chance that he goes above 90, which is all right, but... Um, there's also a chance, a very, very likely chance that he goes and scores a 50 or a 70 or something like that. And just, we were so annoyed. A lot of people were annoyed when, um, Neil went for 60, uh, or 75 or whatever. Mills did the exact same, basically. Even a Mills, like 80 people were annoyed about. So why go and get Kerner when he's going to do potentially that? I don't know, but maybe that's a bias from the um, Carlton guys or something like that. But I think Kerner will come into effect next year. I think that will be what will happen. Um, Whitfield, I think, is a very, very good um, pod, especially with the way he's playing at the moment. There's just injury concerns, and also I think I'm more happy with my defenders at the moment to not go for Whitfield. Um, Petrarca, I think, is also a good uh, one to look at this week against uh, North, and he has favourable fixtures, so you could look at that. Just trying to check if anyone else is really from my team that I need to go over so far. No, so I can look at everyone. 
And then um, one of the last, one of the guys that I think is more intriguing to look at is actually Flanders. Um, Adelaide Oval is going to be a tough matchup, so I think these last three you could really look at here. Um, Swans will probably put a tag on him, but they could easily just think um, Tuka Miller is going to be a, a taggable offence. So I think um, I'm going to sit it out one more week with Sam Flanders, I think, as um, I like the Libba more. And I don't really like this Adelaide with Adelaide charging at the moment matchup. Um, I much rather like the Swans at the SCG where they seem to be able to give up some points. Um, and then Carlton and North Melbourne, I think, are favourable matchups. And I think getting in Flanders will enable me to bank a lot more cash from my um, from my off field. And banking that cash off field could be huge. Um, Sheasel is another guy that I think is in almost the same boat as Flanders. It will be an easy move for me to get next week from Darcy Cameron and to get off of um, necessarily Banks or something. Whoever out of Banks and Williams is has the um, higher break even effectively. I think it will be Williams because Williams has a tougher scoring. So unless um, Bailey Williams goes down for West Coast, I have a feeling that Jack Williams will just be a 50s or 40s type guy. Whereas Banks, I think, has the capability of going 70s, 80s, 90s. So I think that's why I'll try and keep Banks for another week, because that could be 30, 40k difference. Um, but I think Sheasel and Flanders, getting to them is going to be pretty easy, as I think I already have 30, 40k spare. And um, the lowest that I see Williams um, being at when I cash him out next week is around 310, 305. And that's another 100k. So that would be 150k on top of... Um, on top of Darcy Cameron for Sheasel uh, or Viney, and that would be roughly 860, 870k, and that would be huge. So uh, these two plus butters would be leaving me around 80 or 90k in the bank, and then trading out banks the week later with uh, Windhager. Most likely, Windhager will be around that 680k, banks will be around that 400k. That gives me 860k plus the potential 50 that I had in the the bank from these trades next week from the Sheasel or Flanders trades gets me around about that 940k range and that gets me close to potentially getting a laird for the bench which will be quite a good outcome to be honest um, and I'm really hopeful that I can get a laird for the bench for the last two weeks and then be able to potentially upgrade um, if I look here um, potentially use the likes of our uh, um, Boys and Mullen to get um, potentially someone huge as we look at, um, look here, potentially swapping. I mean, Andrew Brayshaw did his job. I mean, these all, all these guys are doing their job. So um, potentially moving on one of the, um, one of the defenders for another, like a Houston or something in the last week or something, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. It's Houston. Who does he have in the last really targeting? Yeah, he could be moved on. Um, and just trying to find out who we're looking at North and West Coast. Who did West Coast have in the last week? They've got Adelaide, so Adelaide doesn't really have any good players you could target. And then North Melbourne, if we look where we are North, LDU, we'll see. They have Gold Coast, so Gold Coast just, there isn't really anyone from Gold Coast you could target in the last week. Um, Gold Coast, you could target uh, no one else here. You wouldn't really want to target a Powell, would you, at all? Um, a Rowell either. Um, Flanders, you would. Uh, Flanders could be actually one that you target if the yeah if he's playing North, that could be one that you target and you try and make a lot of. Um, that could be one that I target to be able to get Roy Laird on my bench for my last couple of weeks. But we'll wait and see on that one. Is there anyone else that I really need to talk about here? Um, I don't think there really is, as um, Wengene Malira could be one, actually. And who does he play? He plays ball. He has the tough last two matchups, so I'm not. I don't recommend that one actually. Nick Newman, one, two, three. The last two matchups fairly good, so that could be one to go to. Who does Will Day have in the last two? Tough matchups. Wouldn't go for that. Uh, Rory Atkins actually. He could be one that you just target in the last game. If he continues up this form and is a one oh uh, a one ten type of guy, maybe you target him for that North Melbourne matchup and you get rid of. If I look back at my team, Jordan Dawson, I think is a good um, 
a good obviously I'm gonna hold Nick Dacos he he has a and then hold um you could get rid of Sicily if he has that Frio matchup because he went 70 against them. Doherty has a Giants matchup. He could go huge. You could get rid of Sinclair, but I still think he'll be fine against Lions. And Tom Sinclair, um, not Tom Sinclair, Tom Stewart has a tough matchup against um, the Bulldogs. So you could just look to loop um, Rory Atkin in there or something or other and get rid of maybe a Liberatore for, because he has that tough matchup at um, Geelong, but even so, he did really well last time. You could look at getting rid of a Brad Crouch or something like that and getting uh, another guy in there, but, or uh, getting in a, what do we say with Houston? Houston had a um, Richard matchup, which I think he could, he could do well in that. Does it say, has he played Richmond yet this year? Richmond, he went 78 again, so that was a tough game for him. But there's so many options at this point that it's kind of hard to tell you exactly who to go for. I do think that Rory Laird and um, Liberatore are two of the um, definite ins this week. And I would say also, just because I don't think there is much need for those growth um, rookies anymore. As if you can see with me, I have enough to even get a 23rd, a top, top tier 23rd premium, like one of the like getting a Laird, who is the second most expensive guy that I don't have in my team. Um, so I think there is reason to say um, that even just looking at Oliver, we could look at targeting Oliver in the last couple of weeks if I can get enough cash. Like if uh, Williams and, and uh, Banks go nuts in the next couple of weeks, I could be looking at getting in potentially close to somewhere near... Um, um, close to somewhere uh, near that 960, 970k for that 23rd premium. But I don't think you really need to get those uh, guys that are going to be averaging 60, 70 on the bench per se in the last four weeks. I think you can just get rid of um, rid of your guys for 200k guys at this point and try and get all your cash off the bench at this point and try and get down to that 1.6, 1.7 mil bench as you have eight guys on the bench. Because currently, if you look at my bench, I'm at 403, um, 1, 000, 1,031,000, um, 1.3 mil, 1.55, 1.75. I'm, I'm still sitting at probably about 650, 660k off my bench already, which is, which does amount to a bench, which does amount to like an 860k player if I can get them all off. And I think I'm still going to gain another... 100k off of um off of the likes of a Rory Laird or off of sorry um Banks and Williams in the next couple of weeks to and Windhager to get up to that Rory Laird type of player. So I think there is a lot. There's still so much cash gen um available out of those rookies that are still playing on your bench. So I don't think you really need them. But anyway, that is the video. A little bit of a long conclusion, I guess. But anyway. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks, guys. Goodbye.